Great, welcome to today's uh, Jenkins GSOC meeting for the Cloud Events plugin. So community bonding. So, you know, we're exploring the project and hasn't quite reached the coding phrase, but Shruti has been very engaged, so it's great. <laughs> you can tell us, you were mentioning before to me some of the work you've been doing this week, right? Feel free to. Yes. Um, yeah, so this week, you know, it was not a lot of coding. It was more like discovering the past of plugins that we talked about. Um, so it was the statistics gatherer plugin. So I had it on my system and I was just sort of playing around with it, understanding the code. And then I also found similar plugin for listener implementations, um, one of which was the extreme notification plugin, which is a little different, but it has the, the same um, sort of events that it's emitting. Um, and then uh, there was another plugin which I logged into two days earlier, and then Oleg also mentioned something which I had seen, which is the um, GQS monitoring plugin, and it's it's a bit similar in the sense that it's also like publishing information that we need about you know Jenkins objects, like about jobs, about queue, about um, the builds which are currently in the in the queue, but it's also different because it's using stapler, which I quite I quite get it. You know, it's like the URL binding that I'm not exactly sure why um I think how it can help us because the statistics gatherer plugin I think is it's a really good way just the listener implementation is going to provide us all the information. So um but but you know that was something that I wanted to talk about with you guys was just understanding stable implementation what can be done, um, and I also like looked into other listener implementations and I have like noted down all the possible um, like implementations for the events that we can, you know, possibly emit, uh, and let's see. Yeah, it, it was it was mostly you know just understanding a lot of like Jenkins native things as well as just uh, you know like Hudson in general and all of the you know, actions, and, and then there's the root action, then there's, you know, um, the, what was that action? I kind of forgot the name of that. <laughs> um, I think it's the check. Any, any, anyway, um, so yeah, that, was, that has been the work um, for this week. And you know, like the coding mostly involved, um, so I was, while I was trying the statistics gather plugin, I was just trying to understand how how it works, so just a little bit of you know tweaking the code and then also running it and using um, have that as a source, which is just sending um, events out to an HTTP sync. Uh, and then I I wrapped one of that event into like a, like a cloud event, so it would look like with you know cloud event headers um, and some of that data sent as cloud event payload. So yeah, um, I think you know the next step would be. It just really going into what the first obviously understanding stapler and how why could that be useful here um and you know just building on from the the stats gallery plugin and just deciding on the sort of events that we need to be emitting if there's any any you know more configuration that needs to be done i know the the statistics gallery plugin it's a little um, it, it, in the UI part, it's a little different because you have all the URLs that you can enter, but it does not, right off the bat, does not send HTTP requests. So that's into advanced configuration. So you have to click on advanced option and then get the, uh, okay, send HTTP request, and that's when it gets routed. Um, so just understanding those things and maybe perhaps also start talking a bit about um, Jenkins as as like async, so consuming cloud events. And for that, I've been looking into the, the generic web hook trigger, which um, uses like root action. It has a URL um, where it gets binded to an object. Um, and that's where it's like listening on to requests, which is being sent by another systems. Um, but just getting a bit more understanding of how we can extend that and then move on from just, okay, when, a, when an event comes in, the most, you know, the common thing is to trigger a build and have that connected to like a job or a project that's, that gets triggered for the build. But there could be other things too, you know, um, maybe if, 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 um, if something is in the queue and if an event comes in, maybe you want to push it out of the queue or something like that. I'm just talking about
So to uh, what extent have you tried the, the JQL stuff? Uh, so uh, the JQL stuff that Oleg mentioned, like I've never even heard of it because I don't have much, much experiences in. Um, but a good way to go ahead with this would be to just kind of see which one, you know, suits you better in terms of like working and uh, kind of just like compare which kind of... Uh, like if listener is better or if like the JQS stuff is better. Yeah, so with JQS, what it basically was doing is, um, I think I have it on my local, like on my Junkin system, so I can do a little bit of it. So basically, let's do it. So here's what's going to look like. Um, so all of these, like whatever it's publishing here, you know, or um, job, or cause of blockage and all of these, um, these basically are like the exported, like stapler from ex um, stapler export engine, so it just is going to exist on um, I get, I get JQS's purpose, and if we want to tie all of this information to a URL, and so if someone was reading off of the URL, they would have this information with them. But what I don't understand is, um, you know, since we are trying to extract all of this information and wrap it into XML or JSON and then send it over, um, I sort of don't understand why would it be helpful to us? Because it's doing exactly, like essentially the same thing, you know, it's, it has, um, the the stapler export engine just uses some what those native um, the, the Hudson Jenkins or classes and then it extracts information about the build um, a, a project and and then puts information out as exported bean so that's whatever the IP address under exported bean just English information XML um, document okay so open up Um, so this is the um, implementation that we were looking at earlier. Um, so So 
So it's basically getting all of this information again from the executor or like whatever is executing it and then using the Twitter and putting all of this information onto um, the XML. So, um, you know, I understand that if we want to tie this information to a URL, and then put it there as XML or even as JSON. It, it works with JSON. Just for like mention. I haven't looked at it yet, but um, but it works. Uh, so I think I, I I'm not really clear on how or why would we need to use or you know just just as sort of um, an alternative method. I don't understand how it can how it's going to work. So you know if you um, if you guys have any. On um, ideas on this, or just how any arcane information that would get like that would be good, but if not, it's totally okay. If we can I'll probably drop an essay in Slack or research more about that. Um, but for now, I think looking at the, the, there are also a lot of other plugins that I saw. There was another. Uh, you know, the, the statistics gather is a really good example, and then the extreme notification plugin. But then I was looking at extension points, um, and then I looked at all the, the, the sort of plugins which have extension points for the listener implementation, and then there were quite a few, and they have very similar implementations. You know, not all of them emit the similar events, but um, a lot of them are using the same implementation. Um, and the JQS monitoring system, which is using Stapler, it also is, you know, it, it is sort of pulling that information and it is putting the, that out into like, you know, outside for people or other systems to access through a URL. That's what I think. Um, so, you know, what, what maybe you, if we were using Stapler, maybe it would be designing, you know, like something puts information into the URL and then there's another class which is pulling information out of it and then um, wrapping it inside JSON. Or if it's in, you know, it's natively in JSON, then just having like putting extra information as a cloud event and then putting in more headers and then sending it over to the HTTP to the sync. About stapler, there's not a lot I know about stapler, but uh, from what I, whatever I know, it feels uh, it feels like it's something that uh, is closely related to the descriptor describable model that Jenkins uh, uses to kind of like map, you know, what you have on the URL and what you have like underneath uh, inside Jenkins. So it kind of is like a thing which staples the front end and back end together to kind of have this, you know, URL to object class object feel mm -hmm. and like information flows through that way. Uh, so I'm not so sure if it's, uh, it's the way to go, but what I would suggest in this case is what we should do is we should kind of make a pros and cons, li cons list because we have two very distinct ways in which we can get information here. You have this uh, listeners, and then on the other hand, you have these, uh, uh, this exported information of some sort. Uh, I feel like in this case, we should like look at the pros and cons like for both of them and which fits best for our use case. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if, uh, the stapler information maybe works well in like headless scenario where Jenkins UI, I don't know. Can Jenkins UI be disabled? Is that yeah. a thing? So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, if uh, there is, a, if there is Jenkins file runner running and if we have our plugin installed on Jenkins file runner, would it be possible to, you know, use the JQS stuff? I'm not sure about that, but I feel like if we have uh, the statistics gatherer, maybe uh, it would possibly be able to use that statistics gatherer implementation through the Jenkins file runner. Mm -hmm. If you, so are you aware of Jenkins file runner uh, project? About about what? The Jenkins file runner project. Um. So imagine you have like a 
uh, headless Jenkins, which just runs uh, jobs, like uh, based on like you have you based you have this Docker you have this uh, image where you provide your uh, Jenkins file and the plugins are pre-installed in that image of headless Jenkins and once you give the Jenkins file it runs that Jenkins file based on whatever plugins are there in that so it's like a, a closed off environment mm -hmm. for, of Jenkins and it it makes Jenkins kind of uh, what do you call it wait you are you you are you talking about like Jenkins file or are you talking about something related to Jenkins file? It's a, it's called Jenkins file runner. Okay. Oh yeah yeah I yeah I um I'm aware of Jenkins file. I I thought that Jenkins file runner is like a different concept. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. No, Jenkins file runner is a different. Uh, it's it's a project which was created by Oleg and like some other guys. And it basically makes Jenkins uh, serverless. And even if it might be a little heavy in terms of like as an image, it works very well. Uh, so if the plugin had to be, so I'm thinking this way, if the plugin had to be used in a headless mode where Jenkins uh, is not, is not using the UI anymore and is just taking a Jenkins file and running it as it has it, uh, it should be able to do all these things, uh, like send out cloud events. When a file runner, like, like when a file runner runs, it should be able to send out these cloud events to the, you know, sync, whichever sync is given at that point in the day, right? So I may be thinking too far ahead, but the thing is, uh, that's why what we need to do is like make a pros and cons list. If the listener uh, is more viable for us or is the uh, JQS implementation more viable for us. It's called JQS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, JQS. Um... So we need to, we need to, you know, figure that out first. If there are a hard dependencies on any one of them on the UI, then I, I think we, we need to uh, recon reconsider and like use the other tools which are available. So apart from these two, there was something else you mentioned as well, right? Which yeah, was... it's um, like the plugin? Uh, not the plugin itself, but the way in which information is captured. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think like these two primarily, like the, the listener implementation, which is used in several different ways because there are a lot of implementation examples or like just listener um, classes and then stapler. Um, but they, again, like I sort of don't understand how stapler is going to work. Um, even if it's like, you know, if you're talking about headless system, um, essentially going to be connected to that UI, right? Yeah. If we are using um, Jenkins a stapler, and, a sense, and it's also adding the overhead of just parsing information from a URL. If that information is going to exist. How, or, how are you sure it is uh, parsing information from the UI? Or is it kind of intercepting between, uh, like, you know, information get, getting to the UI? Like is like um, is, is it like listening on certain like endpoints or something? No, 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 not UI, URL. Um, like parsing. Oh, okay. It's going to exist somewhere and you have to read out like out of it. That's because whatever I have looked about um stapler for now is just it like is going to be binding those objects at a particular URL and then. Um, whatever we are passing in, you know, suppose we want a custom field to exist at the um, URL slash API slash X and whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, we'll have to, you know, like mention it, okay, this is the information that we want to export. And then in, out of that information, that's going to be another, another. Okay. Can you check one thing uh, for me? Can you check if there is a hard dependency on these uh, URLs? Um, uh, wait, on the what? On the URLs, the, uh, a hard dependency on 
the plugin kind of knowing the urls i don't even know if that's a viable question uh, because i'm not as uh, good with jenkins as oleg or these other guys might be but i just i just want you to check if there is such a thing of there being a hard dependency on these urls uh, from the plugin if so then probably it's better to go with the listener implementation because from what from what you said i feel like it's the the monitoring from the jqs monitoring kind of revolves around urls yeah that's that's what even like like my understanding is and when it's uh you know reading information of just like presented to the ui as like you know that earlier um i think it's reading off of that that doc whatever like the the plugin slash api slash xml that sort of the native if if our plugin is like cloud events plugin so all of this information is going to exist at cloud events plugin slash api slash xml and that's where with the information that we export from our um like java class that's where all of this information is going to exist and suppose we had a similar system of presenting this information to to the user interface um to be reading off of off of that api similar so like but events would be something that that uh, that just come and go right they are going to be yeah. they are not they shouldn't stay uh, yeah. they should be they should come and they should go and uh, having something like this is not helpful for us in any way because we don't need to persist this kind of information unless we have a queue in our play, like with us and i am guessing that queue would be very small because uh, uh, most of the brokering that we'll do we'll do it outside jenkins so we sh we shouldn't persist this kind of information if I'm if something curious. happens an event is sent and if uh, an event happens on outside and we are the sync uh, the event is read and that's about it like, like this won't be persisted anywhere ex but except in the job for example where uh, if an event if a event cloud event triggers a certain job because we've configured it to be so at that point the job would just be say something like okay cloud uh, job triggered because of cloud event so mm -hmm. this yeah this information shouldn't be persisted in it in like a you know single source of truth kind of way this information shouldn't be persisted yeah thanks thank you yeah and like now we can is just actually going to be again just reading off of um the that model and um and whenever you know we're some like we're reading information and then we're sending it out on like the limit agency so we can also sort of alter the the current space of or just like the current how are the current like like that's what i think again i'm not sure if something is right um this is just me sort of putting words out which are in my head which i think um <laughs> i just saw the plugin repo and i just wanted to check when was the last commit made and i checked <laughs> okay uh, let's let's try to uh, okay maybe something that was released 7 or 8 years ago with you know change in email address as like the last commit made it's, it's pretty should, old like, school the stapler <laughs> yeah we should move with like some discretion and like maybe <laughs> uh, maybe understand like uh, you know if like this 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 maybe like a good opportunity to learn to like understand how this stuff works but uh, like really think if we can work with this 
and like see some like newer implementations that are being done and kind of like work in that way because there there is a reason why maybe uh, this same method this method isn't used in the current implementations of any kind of monitoring or like eventing that is being done in jenkins yeah, yeah seven eight years ago it was, it's not very promising mm. I think I'll, what I'll do is actually make a pros and cons list just to, you know, as you said, understand how this works better. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious about just understanding Stapler and how it works. So, and I also have this to. While, while you're looking for the next thing, let me just jump in and, and say, I'm not sure you you know, there's an events um, meeting, event SIG meeting with the Continuous Delivery Foundation this afternoon in about an hour and a half time. So if you're at all, you know, able or inclined, it, I, I don't know if today's discussion is necessarily pertinent to you, but just in general, I, I would think that you find, uh, will find the conversation interesting. I can send you the link, or I'll put it in our channel for this. On the events, uh, current the event sec today, we'll be talking about uh, Tekton cloud event stuff. So we'll be talking about how to get cloud events. So we are making a new controller for Tekton in, for cloud events and kind of getting cloud events out of Tekton through the new controller. And we'll be working on you know making those events into CDF events. So at some point uh, we'll do the same thing in Jenkins. So Tekton is like our testing down right now for like this stuff. So it should be interesting if you want to join. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that was our first question. Um, and the second is, you know, just thinking about the events itself, what mm -hmm. sort of things that we want to commit, what and things about. Um, so, you know, there's the information about the build that um, a build has started, it's finished, uh, and then it's running. Um, then there's like build steps, of course, you know, change from one step to another, to another, so, so on. Um, then there's, you know, information the executor or the Jenkins computer, if something is online, if something changed or something failed. Uh, and then there's information about Jenkins itself, you know, um, shut down or Jenkins loaded. That, those were the two which I kind of found interesting mm -hmm. um when we say jenkins shut down or jenkins loaded how is that different from uh, like maybe just okay maybe it's like you know there's like there's a cluster and when you say a jenkins computer offline so that's just talking about one of those like one of the nodes which is off and when we just say like jenkins shut down that just means everything is shut down mm -hmm. And then there's um, information about like item and um, Jenkins item copied, item deleted, renamed, um, updated, those kind of things. And then job, job started, job finished. Uh, so do we, I know like we, we, we were talking a bit on Slack about starting off with what's the most um, sort of used and um, that can have priority. Do, is there anything that we can add to it or something that we can delete or something that we can just think about? I know that we have not talked about just Jenkins computer, that it's offline or it's online or it's unavailable or it is configured. Um, but I think that's, that can be a very important event. Um, and, you know, just out of like in, in CI CD systems, if you want to, if something is failed and if you want to, you know, trigger another action of adding a near um, node or something like that, maybe. Um, how, what would you think? I 
I think to get started, uh, focusing on like the actual jobs and bills is a, uh, is a good idea. Uh, computers could be something we could do further once we are done with the entire build life cycle. So starting from like, you know, creating jobs or project to like, you know, starting builds and the life cycle of builds and then the steps between them. And then after, and then after that, we can look at, you know, computers and the cloud stuff where nodes are provisioned. Uh, did you find listeners for them as well? Yeah, like it's computers. It's in the uh, the other one, like the extreme notification plugin. Uh, so that is the that also has quite a lot of implementation, and it was really interesting because they are pretty similar, but they still have you know like different. It's 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 computer listener. <laughs> That's what it's called. But what is it called? Um, the plugin or the listener? I'll, the, the plugin. It's extreme notification plugin. I'll drop I'll drop the link to it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the name of this plugin. Sending another one which I did not find as relevant to um, what we sort of like the events that we we want to publish. It's like this one is more related to Jenkins performance, so you know the threads remaining CPU utilization and stuff. Um, but this one was also interesting. So There was a new plugin which was recently released. And like it recently started, the work on it recently started. I can't put my finger on it. Um, it's called Open Something. What's an open source monitoring software apart from Prometheus? Uh, yeah, open telemetry plugin. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how relevant this is right now, but it uh, could be helpful. Open telemetry is very interesting, but um, that's pretty interesting because my 
Maybe I'm just wrong. My impression on open telemetry was really for more observability once your application is deployed. Whereas we're, we're looking for, I guess, in many ways, greater observability or even tracing when the pipeline is running and capturing all the events that are happening. Yeah, yeah that is definitely what, what we are going for. Uh, I was thinking of this plugin in the uh, in a way that we could, you know, just see like what, how it is implemented and maybe if there are some, uh, you know, a few things, if we can find, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to understand the uh, landscape here and if there are like any kind of monitoring plugins in Jenkins, uh, if it is a monitoring plugin or like an eventing plugin, it's then a good example for us to just dive into, see how it's implemented, and then see what's the best possible solution we can come up with uh, based on these different examples. Something that's worked best in the past, or maybe it's, there's something we need to figure out. So. Like in, yeah, like here, there is the computer listener being used. I think it's more around the, you know, understanding performance of Jenkins itself. The Jenkins monitoring plugin, I haven't looked at it, but um, yeah, that, that might have I actually found a really cool, <laughs> another cool plugin it's by Jeff, or he has worked on it, and it uses the same implementation. It's GitHub auto status plugin. <laughs> it's pretty. This monitoring plugin made me think about uh, four keys for some reason. The four key project uh, where you can see all the events going in and out, probably from Jenkins and kind of see like a graph. I don't know. This could be something. <laughs> Yeah, you know, most of these um, plugins are using 
and like the the latest ones or the some of them are pretty old, but I think most of them are pretty, um, you know, recent. And they're using listener implementation, even if it's on the pipeline. When looking at the GitHub build status or like the GitHub um, on status plugin, and this is also using listener implementation with graph and stuff on the pipeline. Uh, and like the listener, huge listener. A lot of these plugins are using the listeners. It's interesting because when um, Dina presented the Forkeys project just a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, uh, I don't think there was an implementation for Jenkins yet that they'd done. Neither, uh, neither was there for like uh, Tekton technically because she did it every she did everything to through BigQuery, um, and there's not like one. I don't think there's a single singular thing like a place where cloud events can be uh, monitored as such. But uh, she uh, so she basically implemented it uh, implemented the four keys with Tekton. Now. Here we can think of, uh, you know, doing that through Jenkins, um, and you know, instead of taking in uh, Tekton cloud events in BigQuery, we are taking in uh, Jenkins cloud events in BigQuery. Yeah, this this could be your contribution, Shruti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And. He, Jeff has worked on Get, GitHub auto status plugin. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's why I mentioned it. Like, I found pretty cool and Jeff has worked on that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm guessing these meetings might be a little, uh, little too early for him. Yeah, he'd approved it, but they are early. I think they're crazy early for him, like five in the morning or something. So we might have to try at the very least. We, we may not be able to get everyone, but we should, we should actually, I'll put it in the Slack, we should make um, an APAC friendly meeting time because it, it is a shame to be missing out on his expertise. Do, do you guys think that if we um, shift this meeting to like two to three hours, it might work for you? Would it work? It, it works for, for me generally, but two hours, well, two hours forwards, um, there's there almost every Monday, there's a CDF SIG that I think Vibhava and I are both, both involved in either way, their best practices or events, which you probably will, um, might wanna sit down too. And, but uh, one one hour uh, before is early, is fine for me. And one hour is fine. So one hour or three hours. Uh, basically, I'm probably the most, flexible unless and this is totally possible should we need to we made a meeting time that was that worked for apac and pacific region like um, where jeff is on the, the west coast of the us i think it's just so hard to span europe pacific coast of the us and then apac through so like india time it's like it's just it's just such a wide spread it's it's, right. it's like teeny bandwidth and it's going to be painful for at least some people so yeah that's, that's really true um i think like the most you know optimal would be just like little late nights for india evening slash like um early evenings for your maybe kind of early morning for the u.s but not 5 a.m early hopefully yeah. <laughs> So if if we did propose um, one hour later or three hours later, three hours later is probably getting really late for for y'all there. I think one hour later is fine. Three hours later, I've been a I've been an old man lately, and I've been sleeping <laughs> at nine in the, at night and having dinner at six thirty <clears throat> in the evening. So <laughs> I think one hour later is good. Okay. All right. I'll propose one hour later. So I hope they will do that from from next week. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.
So anything else, Shruti? Any other questions? Like that is a pretty big um, topic. So this meeting, meeting, I think this meeting, <laughs> I think we can keep about um, Jenkins as a source and what we talked about. And then um, I'll, I'll make a pros and cons, but I think I'm going to for now continue with a listener implementation and then on the side also keep looking for other implementations and possibly if you know there's if there is a better way or a different way we can work with we can also look into that. That sounds great. That sounds very okay. good. Also, also keep in mind the uh, sorry sorry Carl. Also keep in mind just like how you're gonna test this stuff. So like think as like a test, it should be as testable as possible. That's all, that's all I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good, I was just gonna, sorry, go on. I was just gonna add, please do ask questions on the Slack channel, any questions you have, especially, um, for Jeff in the run-up to, to hopefully next week's uh, meeting, which will be at a slightly better time for him, but because you're looking at this plugin that he worked on, you know. Considering Jeff has already worked with listeners, I think you can ask him about, you know, which one is better. Uh, so I feel like we already kind of know which one is more used. So we can kind of go with that because there is some faith in listeners and in people. Uh, so we can kind of go with that, but I think it's a good idea to ask Jeff on the channel uh, about like JQS versus listeners, if he's considered something else before, apart from JQS, which he think might be a good idea to, uh, you know, dive into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Definitely a lot from. Um, like everything he knows, and especially since we have built this similar implementation. Yep. Okay. Um, well, I don't have anything right now. I mean, I have things, but I don't think that the, the five minute sort of time that we have left is going to be. So, so about so your question with your burning desire to be answered right now is about Jenkins being monitored itself, right? Like, if Jenkins should be uh, sending out events on its state, that's what you want answered. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, sort of. It was. I think that's sort of like. The, during the conversation sort of got answered by right now my burning desire like not the burning desire but the burning question that I have in my mind is um just like Jenkins is the thing because that's also something that we need to be um you know keeping in mind and figuring as we are building it as a source and and yeah a little bit of a little, little bit of also what you said. Like on Slack and then in the week next week, hopefully. Okay, let's do that then. With the meeting, the, the cloud CS meeting, is it? It's at nine o'clock. All right, so I don't have anything to add. So. Neither great work this week. I feel like you are really getting to grips with all the different ways that this has been approached and the various Jenkins plugins and 
we seem to be kind of consolidating around the idea of listeners, but it's really good to do the exploratory work. And I guess in that way, I understand what a lot of the um, certainly more recent plugins are, why they're choosing what they're choosing. Definitely. We are definitely going to research on that as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks for, for being here. And uh, yes, communicate more on the Slack channel if you if you have any questions or anything. Like this is really for you, so we want to answer all your questions as much as possible. And maybe have awesome. a thing. Yeah, good. Go ahead, we're saying something. Wait, were you saying something, Tara? No, that was it. That was, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. See you.